So this is Brian from Street Art Films. We're here in Cambridge, Maryland with Michael Rosado. Did I say your name you right? You got it. Uh, grew up in St. Petersburg, Florida. Uh, you know, did my stint in New York, D.C. Lived here for the last 18 years uh, out in Church Creek, Maryland. What brought you here? Uh, I needed a big studio that I wouldn't get kicked out of. Basically, you know, in D.C. they kept renovating my spaces. You know, we get dirt cheap and uh, jacking the price up and I said no more. So I decided, my wife and I drew a big circle around Washington and found this place. I cut my teeth doing uh, diorama paintings for, nat you know, for natural history museums, you know, doing backgrounds and molding them so it looks like, you know, from the, the dioramas in front, seamless into the landscape. So I'm a realist, you know, that I, I, you know I, it's kind of funneled me into doing realism. So this is just kind of like a, you know, a progression you know the human figure, but most of my stuff is you know like this. I would I, you know I wouldn't call it hyper realism, but I would definitely call it representation. Tell me about this mural. When did this process begin? Uh, two months ago, I was uh, I got a panic phone call from somebody that said they needed help. They were in a jam, and would I be interested in painting a mural on the Harry Tubman Museum? And so that started the process. We had a community meeting. You know, a lot of people got together, some artists, uh, community leaders and uh, just started throwing out ideas about what people thought, you know, one word to describe Harriet Tubman. And I was you know, taking notes, so. Uh, and then at the end, they asked me what I thought, and I came up with a quick idea of, uh, let me expose the inside of the building to the story of Harriet Tubman. You know, do some Trump Loy as a possibility, and, and they were excited, and they said, okay, run with it. So then my process was, how do I get from that to what is behind me? And that, that process is always an incredible process. You know, you, you wait for that moment of awe. You know, you go through a lot of bundled up pieces of paper on the floor saying no, no, no. And I thought, oh, wouldn't it be cool if she was looking around? And then I thought, wouldn't it even be cooler if it was that one moment when the enslaved person has to make the decision, you know, to take the hand. So when that awe moment hit, then it was just a matter of, of how do I pose it? How do I, how do I, you know, make the hand suggest that I'm offering it to you at the same time, I want you to grab it, and when you grab it, we're going. What's been the response locally? Uh, uh, you're seeing it, you're witnessing it. It's, uh, it, you know, it, it's hard to explain. You know, you really, you know, as an artist, that's, this is what you want. You want people to interact with something you created, you know, and it's, it's amazing, it's mind boggling. When you work at this scale, as, as you know, dealing with street artists, things change immediately. You know, when you step back here, you see it differently than when you're seeing it from two feet away. So you had, as you're working it, you, you, you work out some details. You know, originally the hand was lower and I realized it wouldn't work because the person standing there would be at their knees. So you raise the hand up and then you have to deal with the force shortening. So there's all these things that go into to creating, you know, a, a, a finished image or a finished work of art. And then obviously the rest is just, you know, you apply paint, you know, so it's taking the small scale larger and then just working it. And the face, you know, the face is really important because uh, historical photographs of Harriet Tubman, she's very stern. It's later in life, you know, she has the, you know, the wear and tear of life, so she's very, you know, almost looks angry, obviously, you know, for a good reason. When she was doing the Underground Railroad, she was in her early 30s. So somehow I had to soften the face to make it so a child could be approached Yet at the same time, an adult would realize that that woman has enough strength that I can trust giving my hand to her, you know, to go. But like the hardness in her face, you had to be, she had to be that hard. This is beautiful as it is. Right. But I don't want anybody to misconstrue where you're coming from with that because I, I got understand you. where you're coming yeah, from. Yeah. But somebody else might feel like, oh, don't take that hardness out of her. Oh, no, no. You know what? Because usually, and I probably didn't get to that mm -hmm. yet in the interview, is that that there is a hardness in there, but it's it's slightly softened because of of age. A, you know, this is an age where you really. And you see, feel, she couldn't you, get rid of that hardness if she wanted to. Oh heck no, I know that for sure. She went no, and but I agree. And, yeah, yeah, was, I hear you saying. Because she was telling them to come on. And then what you get is a very younger version of a woman in her prime, ready to take you on a journey. You know, and it's really, really quite cool.